Welcome. Tara, welcome. The, uh, 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 we have five members, and so let's uh, call the meeting to order at 6.08, it looks like. And uh, if we could have a roll call, please. Chair Lines. Present. Board members Loveless. Wolf. Yes. Hutchison. Yes. Hintermeister. Here. Edgerton. Brown. Yes. Oliver. Okay. Um, the uh, report of the chair. Um, I don't have anything really to report, but sitting in for Mr. Sullivan today is Tara Donovan. She is our chief planning manager. Uh, and so, you know, you, you get to see that we didn't bring in the, uh, the specially wired, uh, you know, hot seat. Uh, oh, good. So, so, yeah. <laughs> so you'll be helping me through the meeting and uh, want to find out if uh, do any of the uh, committee members have anything that they would like to touch on as we move forward. Kyle? No. Julie? No. Okay, good. Even better yet. And also, then uh, we will, uh, now is the time for anyone who is here and would like to speak to an item not on the agenda. You can uh, uh, sing out or we'll move on to, if I could have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Uh, I want to just point out a very very minor typo in the minutes the he she um it's it's in the executive officer's report um on the second bullet point there's just a y missing in coyote valley sorry just wanted to mention that okay i'll fix that yeah thanks and then there's a second one that the leslie little is uh, referred to as a he mm. and she's a she Okay, so um, with those two uh, corrections, um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And any opposes? I'm no. sorry, did I miss who motioned in second? Oh, did, did we miss that? Okay, oh. so who? I'll second. Motion, second. Do you want motion, me to make the motion? You? Yes, please. Okay. Um, okay, good, all right. <laughs> with, the, with, the, with the minor corrections, uh, I move to um, accept the, the minutes, adopt the minutes. Thank so you, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Good. Okay, so the motion passes unanimously. Um, I would uh, just uh, say that we might want to open the public uh, comment period later. Uh, Doug, do Muir, Doug Muirhead, who we all know, is in a competing meeting. Okay. And uh, he's hoping to finish there and then come over here a little bit later. Yeah. I don't know if he has anything we, we, to, to say. We'd be glad to, and in, in the interest of hearing from folk, uh, more than happy. So then, um, Tara, you, you want to bring us up to date on the um, committee member selection process? Yes. So as you know, we have an, a vacant seat on the Public Advisory Committee, and we started soliciting folks back in May, and both through a, a listserv, and then we also requested that our implementation and governing boards reach out to their different, um, their different um, cons cons constituents and then you guys as well, reaching out to the folks that you know um, for the position. Um, we received a total of seven um, applicants. Um, three were considered qualified. We moved three to interviews. One was a no-show, and two but were interviewed. And Walt, um, Ed, and Jill Moross um, all interviewed the, th the two that came in, and we selected um, Daniela, or sorry, Danielle, Danielle Davenport. This is what happens when I re re um, re rely on my memory. Danielle Davenport. Um, she is a career professional in the technology in industry. Looking at her resume, I was not part of the interviews, but looking at her resume, she's very accomplished. Um, she served as, as an executive um, on several um, national, international firms. She has started her own um, funding group um, for startups in the Bay Area, and then now is a, uh, serves as a, as a strategic advisor to a, a startup, essentially a startup. So she, you know, has ha, came from kind of our core Silicon Valley company, um, Hewlett Packard, and has worked with a variety of different firms over the years. And I think she is a good representative of the 
kind of Bay Area um, business community here. So we, we recommended her um, for appointment to um, the PAC and that will go to the board in September and her first meeting will be in November. Hey, uh, Jesus. Well, do you have anything to add since you well, were- Well, she's at... a San Martin resident and, and a bit of a family. She has daughters that are 14 and 12. Um, and she will also be on the ballot in uh, November for uh, District 6 on the Gavilan College Trustee Board. And uh, um, she has um, more energy than uh, my uh, five and three year old grandsons. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's amazing. Uh, she, she's like the ever ready uh, bunny. Um, and it was interesting that uh, of the two, uh, that both candidates were uh, you know, absolutely outstanding. Um, the other candidate, um, he uh, found out about us uh, through a note that, that Leslie Little put on next door Crestwood, and uh, uh, and that is how he found out about it. And so, in in when I gave a report to the uh, uh, the implement implementation board, you know, I noted that because that's something that. Um, as we move forward, I really think that anytime we can take advantage of social media and, and just, you know, even posting um, on Nextdoor, um, you know, meetings coming up with the agenda, that, that kind of stuff, because, um, I mean, it's, it's the Morgan Hill total network is about 13,000. Uh, so, I mean, that's great. Okay, any questions? Okay, and then she'll join, join us for our November 3rd meeting. And then uh, uh, presentation by the Nature uh, Conserv item number three, presentation of the Nature Conservancy on the Pajaro Compass, a network for volunteer conservation. So we're gonna table this one to the next meeting. Um, okay. They were not able to, or she was not able to make it to the meeting today. You know, I, and, I, and I read the report, and the, and the one question I had is it doesn't seem, or one of the questions was, they don't talk about residential or commercial slash industrial growth and the demand that that is uh, uh, causing, you know, the, 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 the demand for water on the, on the watershed, and, and uh, truly the Pajaro watershed is in a critical deficit and uh then you know we the greater community are going to have to do something about that as we move forward so the item number four burrowing owl could i just ask a yes. question about the previous item the the thing I, the thing i whenever this comes forward again uh -huh. um i think what i would like to kind of how the Pajaro River fit into the, into the habitat plan. Because I remember uh, during the stakeholder meetings, uh, there was a lot of time spent on fish in the Pajaro and then fish were taken out. And then we had a bunch of wildlife corridors that were identified and they were prioritized. And I, and I think the Pajaro was kind of lowered in priority. So I just wanted to get a general feeling about kind of how the habitat plan currently views the, um, the Pajaro watershed um, in conjunction with that report. And maybe they'll try and talk about that. But... And, I, and if she's not, I will, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll address it. Yeah, okay, thanks. And always near and dear to our heart is the burrowing owl. And I almost feel bad presenting about the burrowing owl because we always talk about the burrowing owl at the pack meetings. But it's one of the species we've been doing the most work for and that we've seen a lot of results on. So. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about um, our most recent management agreement that we've entered into with the city of San Jose at the San Jose Santa Clara Regional Wastewater Treatment Facility. 
Um, Jess, you're a new face to me, so I don't know how much you know about the Boring Owl Conservation Strategy. And well, I mean, it's, this is my third meeting, so I've heard just things from the last two. So. Okay, so I'm going to do a little, go in a little bit of the background of the strategy. It could be a refresher for the rest of you. Our public doesn't seem <laughs> to be, they don't know about it. Um, then I'll talk about the regional wastewater treatment facility itself, what we're hoping to do there, and then how this fits into our permit requirements and the status um, of them. Okay. Besides being the cutest bird, um, the burrowing owl uh, is a small is a is a cover one of the eighteen covered species under the habitat plan. Um, it's a state species of special concern, and it's protected under the Federal Migratory Bird Treaty Act. They're small owls, they're less than a foot tall, and they're found in dry open areas with low vegetation, and they live underground in burrows of other of mammals. So you commonly find them alongside ground squirrels. They eat mostly insects and small mammals. Occasionally they'll munch on a frog or a, a snake. Um, their mating occurs in the springtime, and then they, uh, and then their young owls fledge in the summer. Uh, there's generally six to a dozen eggs. Um, they may nest alone, or they may nest in groups. So, at the beginning of the 20th century, burrowing owls were common throughout the Bay Area. Um, in the 1990s, we we're already seeing a decline in their numbers. Um, there, there were in Santa Clara County. There were 120 to 140 breeding pairs across 12 locations. Last year, in Santa Clara County, we had 21 successful breeding pairs across four locations. So you can see there's quite a, de a decline um, in the species in this area. So the declining trend was noted um, during um, the habitat plan development. And while this species isn't federally or state listed, we knew that it was locally important um, that the po population here, like throughout its range, the breeding population was decreasing. Although we see wintering birds throughout the area, we don't have very many locations where they nest. And so the, um, the permit area for our plan was expanded to include some bayland regions outside the county and outside the, the um, the permit area where we cover activities for development. And that was to take into account where the birds are nesting in the area. So, let's see. The most, oh no, go back. No, no, I can't use my tools. Oh, here we go. So, This northern region here, we call the North San Jose Baylands region. And that's where we have all of our known nesting pairs. In this area, we're focusing our efforts to um, enter into management agreements of the existing bird colonies, as well as looking at areas where the uh, bird has the potential to nest as well. This is where the, the large focus of our conservation activities are. The second area of focus is the Gilroy region which is, there we go, is down here. Um, we do have nesting burrowing owls in San Benito County, and we're trying to lure them into Santa Clara County. Mm -hmm. um, and, we're, and we're trying to figure out how to do that. Um, one potential property is, some, is, a, is one that the, uh, the Nature Conservancy has right along the Pajaro River. Um, we're considering doing management agreements down there. Kyle has is another maybe potential place where we can do some burrowing owl work on his lands as well. Um, you know, again, burrowing owls were most were known previously, but we don't we aren't finding evidence that they're breeding in our county. So that's our second area. Then the South San, San Jose and Morgan Hill regions. Um, we're really, really looking for stepping stone areas, so areas that could be attractive to birds. They may not breed there, but could could provide a potential habitat for them. So those are kind of our four, like three main areas of focus. Okay. 
So the success of our program is really driven by um, our volunteers and consultants. Um, we've established the South Bay Burring Owl Network Survey Network. Um, these are folks that manage our own lands in in the, in the South Bay area that have burring owls in the in their volunteers. Um, we've we've worked with Autobahn, um, Lynn Trulio, Deborah Kromzak, and Phil Higgins to conduct research on on where burring owls are overwintering and if they're staying here to to breed. And then our consultant ICF has helped us create management agreements as well as to conduct outreach and, and coordinate our stakeholder group. So our program goal overall is to have a stable and then increasing population over time. And to do this, we need to recruit one and a half breeding pairs or three owls into, the, uh, into our area annually. And so before we, we started implementing the habitat plan, we actually thought our numbers were lower, so they're, you know, once we started doing monitoring, we found out they're actually higher. But the bad news is we are still seeing a decreasing trend in the number of owls, so that's that. So we have kind of a three-tier focus of activities. So there's tier one, tier two, and tier three activities. Tier one really focuses on managing and protecting existing populations. Um, Tier two is looking at those potential nesting sites and increasing the suitability of them. And then, and then with both of those tier activities, we conduct monitoring of the breeding population. And then tier three is kind of more invasive actions that require uh, approval from the wildlife agencies. And that includes um, doing captive breeding, um, double clutching, and then also supplemental feeding of burrowing owls. Um, Right now, we're looking to see, you know, can we start doing those tier three actions before it's too late? So early next year in 2017, um, we're going to conduct, um, do a, an expert workshop from, to bring experts from around the country on burrowing owls to see, you know, what more can we do for the owls? What has been effective in other places? Okay. So the reason I'm talking today is talked about the regional um, wastewater treatment facility. I first knew this site as Weepy Seepy. It has changed names. Um, I'm trying to do my, and that stands for the water pollution control plant. I'm doing my best to call it the regional wastewater treatment facility, even though it takes forever to say that. Um, but this is up on the border of, of San Jose and, and Santa Clara um, cities and pretty much in the northernmost reg regions of our, our, permit our permit area proper. This is the location where we have the best breeding owls right now. They've been doing four, four years of active management. It is the only location where we, we have seen an increase in nesting success. Um, it has been, man been managed by the Audubon Society. And we've been trying to work with um, the water treatment facility to, to get their property under a management agreement. So lucky us, the city of San Jose has four capital improvement projects and they do not want to pay the boring owl fee. And so we talked to them about doing both a management agreement and a conservation easement. So right now they'll be enrolling 72 acres under conservation easement. So that's a permanent conservation easement. And then we'll have an additional about 120 acres of, um, of management area. It's a total of 201 acres. Um, you can see on the map in that red hatched area is the conservation easement area and the red outline is the, um, is the entire management area. So it's the majority of their buffer lands they've been currently managing for burrowing owls. So you might ask, if they've been doing good work there to date, what's gonna change? Well, not much. So we plan on continuing to do the management that they've been doing at that site, um, providing our own, but we, in, in, instead of them providing the resources, the Habitat Agency will. Um, we, in, um, Audubon has been doing the work, but we are you know, searching a little bit further afield and have, have released an, an RFP to solicit services for the management. So um, we're expecting um, more folks to put, put their hats in the ring to do the management at the site. Um, 
it's pretty exciting for us. So right now, August is the request for proposal period. We'll receive the proposals. Um, in September, we'll, we'll advance the, pre the preferred firm to the implementation board. And then in October, the contract will, will start. So um, you know, what kind of work are we doing out there? Uh, right now, there's the mowing will continue to be, be done by the city of San Jose, but will be directed by whoever is managing the site. Um, they'll continue to do um, both artificial burrows as well as these low perches in the area. Um, we'll be assessing whether we need new ones or just maintain the ones that are existing. Um, doing kind of vegetation clearing around the burrows to keep the vegetation low. Um, weed management. Um, also monitoring for predators, make sure that they're, that um, we don't have a predator problem out there, and also monitoring for um, trespassing. So that's some of the work that'll be done out there. Also, we'll, we will continue to, mon continue to monitor the site um, to see how the owls um, are breeding year to year. Oh, I was supposed to show these pictures when I talked about that, so you can see. Um, this is some, these are pictures actually from the Don Edwards um, uh, Wildlife Refuge where we currently are managing. And you can see here um, folks doing um, weed management, installing rock piles to attract um, prey, um, creating these vegetative berms for um, additional um, prey areas, cameras capturing foxes, and then folks doing the monitoring. Okay, so now I just want to turn a little, to a little bit like what does what do these management agreements and conservation easements mean for our conservation strategy? So I mentioned before that we have we have four breeding areas in Santa Clara County, but we actually have five within our permit area. So Don Edwards actually is in um, Alameda County, and that's one of our uh, breeding sites. Then we have the Regional Wastewater Treatment Facility. San Jose Airport, Nassau, and the shoreline in Mountain View. So those are our five breeding um, colonies that we have in, San, in, in the permit area. So Don Edwards, we currently have a management agreement with them. It's five years to manage the entire 719 acres of uh, breeding owl habitat. At the Regional Wastewater Facility, it's a subset of that area, um, so only 201 acres. So what does that mean for our, our program? Well, we target to have um, about 4,500 acres under management agreement, at, under a, man, a permanent management agreement at the end of our permit term. And we're about eight, at 18% right now if we consider those two management agreements. And then we need about six, sorry, I need to look at my notes for this one. 600 acres under conservation easement. Um, and with the regional wastewater treatment facility that's 72 acres, giving us about 10% of that. So we are slowly moving along with, on, our, on our, per, our permit goals, which is good because we want to be able to protect those sites early in the permit term so that we can better manage for the birds and ensure that there's funding for management. That's it. Any questions? Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure Jan does. Yeah, I think yeah. I, I think I got a bunch of questions. So um, sure one so. one question I was curious about was whether so when you mentioned these um, numbers that are um, we're trying to achieve at the end of the at the end of the term uh -huh. and our current percentages or this three owls per year goal, um, are there any triggers along the way that along the fifty years that if we don't meet some number along the way that something bad happens. We're, like, are, we're already considering that. So we started kind of with the owl from a bad place. There's, mm -hmm. not, I, there's not as many breeding sites in the county. The population isn't doing that well. So we are already considering tier three actions now to avoid the failure of, 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 of the existing breeding sites in, in their permit area. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're at now. So you're asking if someday, what if there are no owls? That we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. 
Yeah, um, I, so, I mean, the one. So one thing is the is the actions that we take, mm -hmm. but the other the other issue is um, is there any permit connection with permits? Yes. So and, if and there's, when we would have we would have to look at modifying our permit and getting a permit of amendment if the species did what, did disappear from the county. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're. I guess that's the driver. Other than we want to do good things for the burrowing owl, but the, it's a it is a permit driver that we are doing all this work now. Mm -hmm. So, I guess my question still is: so, are there are there some targets at which there's some permit impact that could potentially kick in? Not yet. I Not think yet. we would have to have failure of these breeding sites, and and have no longer have the it's it's. The trigger is once we're off target for the populate, like the target population, right. is we, when we would start having conversations with the wildlife agencies to discuss how does this affect our permit. And we're not there yet, but I don't think we're that far away. Okay, but that is then a discussion that we have. Is a discussion. The agency, yeah. it, they're not going to say you can do no more development, mm -hmm. but it is. It I mean, that is something that could happen, but. It's not realistic. It's, it's mm -hmm. a conversation that will happen with the right. wildlife agencies. Right. So regarding this particular site, um, so I noticed in the report that it said there were 20 acres of impact um, that I think were in other parts of San Jose, not, not here. Right? They're not all right there, but most of them are. So the, how we got to 72 acres was kind of a two to one ratio plus a buffer. The buffer, okay. So is this is is the rest of that 200 acres? Then is that kind of a is that is there the potential for that being placed under uh, easement at some point? Is That's that like a goal. bank for so our, San Jose or how does that? Our goal is to get as much of those buffer lands as possible uh -huh. under con conservation easement or a permanent management agreement that we would fund. Yeah. Um, the city is just not ready right now to make that commitment. So mm -hmm. the, and they're ready to do the 72 acres because there is a there is a driver. Um, yes, we would like the rest of it. So that's something we're still continuing to talk yes. to talk about with San Jose. Okay. Um, and then related to that, we're also in discussions with the um, with the airport to do a management agreement or a small conservation easement on some of their lands for burrowing owls. Yeah. And I guess my last question was, um, so um, we've got, we've got um, a lot of management activities here and at Warm Springs on Don Edwards. So are we getting any like useful information going back and forth? Kind of we're learning in one place that we can use in the other or are we doing any experiments um, in management uh, techniques or? How, yes how and no. Kind of I mean, we kind of have a standard toolkit of techniques that we're applying at both places. For some reason right now, the regional wastewater treatment facility is doing really well. In Don Edwards, we're doing the same sort of management out there, but they're not doing as well. Mm -hmm. And we don't know why that is. And so that it's more of figuring out why is, are these not working there. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Other questions? Yeah, just oh, you mentioned that there would be an expert workshop or meeting, and I was wondering, will we be informed of that? Is there an opportunity for any of the pack to attend it, etc.? Yes. Yay! I will invite you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we're thinking just because of scheduling experts coming in, they need a lot of lead time, and while we've now identified who we want to invite, um, early next year is when we're going to target the meeting. Great. Uh, so I've been out with Deborah and Phil on a number of trapping expeditions, and we've been successful sometimes and sometimes not. And it's um, a little bit frustrating to see the owls out there in, in the winter time, and then they're not there during the breeding season. So you said you were trying to attract them up from Hollister, other than putting a sign out that says "Owls Welcome." What what's what specifically are are you going to use to try to attract owls? Because they don't seem to want to breed in Coyote Ridge and along in that area, yet they do up in uh, uh, Altamont. I think those are some of the questions we're going to raise to our experts that come in. I mean, just 
part of it is making making the area more attractive. So keeping the grass lower, making sure the like a grazing regime that's in place um, keep, maintains a low vegetation that the owls like um, is one way. We can't actually like kidnap them from San Benito <laughs> County and bring I, them over. I understand that. Um, but um, that is part of what we will discuss as part of our tier three actions is can we move owls around? And so that might be something we consider. Well, I, I, short of moving them, I, what I'm trying to figure out, because some of the lands that, that we manage have owls on them. Okay. And we would like to implement, you know, whatever procedure, especially on Tulare Hill. We have three there every, you know, every winter they come in. Uh, so you're saying this, this conference or get together, hopefully you come up with some, some processes or procedures that can attract, uh, can attract them there during the summertime? And that might not be possible. They, they may be like, I like to liken them to Midwesterners where we, we winter in Florida. <laughs> but they may come here for the winter and just not, this is not where they go to breed in the summer. But that is one of the questions you'll be looking at in that, that, yes. that conference. Okay. Yes. Okay. Cool. Is it too simplistic or even realistic if we could, you know, harvest surplus in another area, kidnap them and bring them back? That's something we consider, not kidnapping them. But, 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 but yeah, but, <laughs> but, um, but yes. So in one of the things we're looking at is captive breeding and release. So we've talked to the Saratoga Center to see if they would be somewhere we could work, we could work with them to do a captive breeding. And that would be captive breeding and then releasing them onto another, a, a preferred site. I think when this topic came up a couple of meetings ago, there was talk of somewhere in, I don't know if it was Riverside County or somewhere in Southern California, where they have a little bit more success than we're having here. So what do we learn from there that we can practice here? That's a good question. I can look into that. You want some insight because they came and checked our ranch because we had them about eight or ten years ago and so when he came and he looked and he goes what really changed and i go well i haven't changed the grazing or anything like that but then i started thinking my new neighbor is co-park and fishing game and they don't graze anything so when probably my grass was high they went next door to that ranch that was there so you have 100,000 acres on that hillside that probably used to house a lot of owls that moved around and stuff, and now they, they don't. And the property that open space down, or Nature Conservatory has, borders open space, that owns the uh, development rights. The owners sold that, and it went from grazing to farming and it had um, owls on it three years ago. So I doubt if there's owls there now in the summertime because I would pick up hay there and the owls are sitting there. They're, they don't move or anything, they just, they're really calm. So I don't think it would be that hard to just get them to keep moving. No, I, I just, you know, it's uh, there, you just wonder, I mean, I don't like reinventing the wheel. Well, that kind of sounds like what they want to do, <laughs> just to say that we have burrowing owls. Yeah. We may have them, but they just haven't found them. I don't think we have a wheel. Have a there's what? some things still to be invented. A wheel? <laughs> and, that, and that could well be. Um, but, you know, the, uh, they're a part of our history. Yeah. yeah. I think part of the problem they've had when they've tried to kidnap them and, like, move them, is, you know, then, then the problem is, how do you get them to stay where you put them? Right, exactly. Right? And that's, but because that's, if they that's, like that's, somewhere else better, yeah. they're, they're going to go looking. Yeah, that's one, been one of the problems when they've tried to transplant owls is they know where they, they know what they like. Yeah, we haven't figured that out yet. But some of this grass, I mean, that's, you know, that'd be, that's a really interesting kind of thought that's, you know, maybe just more management of, 
even land that's not necessarily breeding habitat, that's foraging habitat, yeah. might help. Actually, that was one of the questions I had. I mean, because when uh, in the report, when there were these like, um, there were like eight items numbered, one, one through seven or one through eight or whatever it was. One of those actions, like number three or something, had to do with just um, um, managing foraging habitat as, a, as opposed to breeding habitat. Mm -hmm. And I think in the North Bay, kind of the, maybe those are the same things, like breeding habitat equals foraging habitat because there's just so little left. But, but I don't know because I don't really know how far, um, like even the owls in the North Bay, how far away they forage from. Are they sticking in these same areas uh, that they breed in, or do they actually kind of go farther afield from? So we we consider a half mile from a breeding site to be from a nest site to be breeding, mm -hmm. and that we assume that they forage in those areas as well when they're breeding. Yeah. But we also consider about a seven and a half miles from those breeding sites to be potential foraging, potential new sites for them. So my guess is. We, I don't. I don't actually don't know specifically, but we are looking to manage these other potential sites for the owls, for them to either forage there or establish new nest sites. So we are looking to improve, to like do mowing and create artificial burrows and encur encourage um, squirrel colonies to establish in these other sites mm -hmm. where we think are suitable, but there's no owls there. So I think it is fair to say that they do forage a little bit more wide ranging than the nest sites, but it, they need that kind of near, near foraging habitat during that breeding period. Does the Don Edwards property have wild turkeys on it? I don't know. Oh. Why do you ask? Oh, I was thinking of competition because that's probably one of the reasons as well at our place because the numbers of wild turkeys exploded. And would you say that wild turkeys are on the increase? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say at, at the Gavilan Gilroy campus, we've got 40 to 60 um, in more than one flock. Yeah. And, and uh, the, those things are just prolific. Before the drought, it was really bad, but it's kind of leveled off now. Other questions, mm -hmm. observations? Okay, so that takes us to the end of the agenda. Does anyone have anything that they would like to have discussed at the November 4 meeting? Mr. Glines, I've added item three to the future business. Um, okay. The next meeting, oh, you, right. Okay, good. Yes, thank you. Anything else? And seeing no additions. <laughs> uh, and if no one has any objections. We will uh, adjourn at 645, and Mr. Oliver should have been here today. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, it took me 35 minutes. Yeah. I could not believe it. Yeah, yeah. Now you can ask me the real questions. <laughs> Thank you for coming today. And just, I came up from Gilroy, and it was like 25 minutes.